by the goddess, Nebi. I... I'd almost lost all hope. Everything's fine, Beth. I'm here. I'm here. This here's a new friend. He rounded up those of us who survived the fall and led us up to the surface. Without him, we'd never have made it out. Let me introduce you to my wife, Erebeth Tirabade, head of the Eagle Watch. Mm. Until the army arrives, I'm the temporary warden of Canalbris. And you're just in time. As you can see, we're in the middle of a battle. And thank you for getting Anevia out of there. The Grey Garrison. Until recently, it served as barracks for the Crusaders, but it's now been taken over by cultists. When the demons attacked the city, their main target was the Wardstone. I trust I don't have to explain to you what the Wardstone is and how important it is to the Crusaders. We must retake it at any cost, or the fall of Canabras will be the beginning of the end of the Crusades, and with them, the rest of the world. I see that you had a difficult journey to the surface. You need to rest. But there's a lot riding on this battle. I have no right to command you, but I'm asking you to help us. Very good. Report to me in full when we get back to the Defender's Heart. It's our temporary headquarters. Right now, the most dangerous cultists are here. The ones occupying the Grey Garrison. Most people in Canabras think that the children of the First Crusaders are simply a legend. Other people say that the day you emerge on the surface heralds the start of the end of the world. I'm not superstitious, but the situation is apocalyptic, all right. Having a living legend on our side can't hurt. Come on, living legend? A walking folktale, maybe? I just need to make sure I don't turn into a running joke. The city's gone. Most of the defenders, including the dragon Terendalev, fell in the first few hours. The civilians either fled or died in the chaos. The place is overrun with cultists and demons. Don't talk like that. Canabras hasn't fallen. Not while it still has defenders like you and me. Sweet words don't change the grim truth. No, she's right. Thank you, Knight. Until we no longer have the strength to hold a weapon, until Ioma Day abandons us, we will fight for Canopris. The Wardstones are a gift of Ioma Day. Created personally by her herald, a mighty angel, and a general of the Celestial Armies. The Wardstones keep the world wound from expanding. They stand along the border of the territory controlled by the demons, creating a barrier to keep them inside. The Canabras Obelisk was the first to be placed. It is the key to the whole barrier. We cannot leave it in the hands of those monsters from the Abyss. The demons have long laid siege to Canabras, but this time, their Lord Descari appeared in the flesh. He ripped the Wardstone from the ground and hurled it halfway across the city to here. I thought the stone was destroyed, but it seems all is not lost, yet. Descari has gone, but the Wardstone is surrounded by a horde of those creatures. What are they going to do to it? Nothing good, that's for certain. But how did he do that? He's a demon! The Wardstone should have burned his filthy hide! It should have. But what happened, happened. We don't know why. That's the spirit! You, take Anavia to the rear! The rest of you with me! <sighs> oh, that stupid locust. Oh. Oh. Lord Horgus Worm, forgive me. I did not realize we had civilians among us. My people will escort you somewhere safe. To the extent that anywhere in Canabras can be said to be safe right now. That's right. Fighting spirit is the one thing that we've got plenty of. <sighs> Actual fighting power? That's not so great. 
Fighting know-how, even worse. But fighting spirit, <laughs> at least we're rich in that. For Ioma Day! For the Queen! Kill the Beast! This will be quick! You dare.
Do we have guests? <laughs> Just in time. The place is a bit of a mess, and I haven't even poured the blood into the goblets yet. Why don't you... Oh! <gasps> what an unexpected surprise! Staunton, my little sweetheart. Long time no see. I've missed you so much. Have you missed me? Admit it. You missed me terribly. Uh, Minago. You again, you wench! Minago, the one who... Be careful. She's one of the deadliest creatures in the whole demon horde. She was once responsible for a massacre in Canabras. She must be back to finish what she started. Does he know me? Staunton, darling. Tell them all how close we were. That wench? She's the one who led me astray. She's the reason my life has gone to the abyss. She's the reason! Why Teresin fell. Oh my, like butter wouldn't melt. What I remember is how eagerly you would run to our trysts, how you begged to see me again, how you promised you'd do anything I asked. By your own free will you said this. And now you claim that Dresden fell because of me. No, no, my dear. That was entirely your own doing. I'll beat your lying lips into your filthy throat! Now, Staunton, don't say things like that. Not about these lips, the ones you kissed so sweetly. Staunton, dearest, don't you love me anymore? Remember how good we were together? I was so hoping that we could patch things up. I'll kill you! Get another yeah. obstacle. Strike! The Inheritor, guide you my son blade. of one! This will hurt! The spirits demand your blood! Endure this! Congratulations, you made it all the way here. This is it, your precious ward stone. But what are you planning to do now, hmm? I could kill you where you stand, but wouldn't it be nice if you could die in battle like heroes? No, I want you to die in despair, scrabbling around like rats in the blighted ruins of your city, blind and broken, your flesh scabbed and seeping, and every moment knowing precisely what was done to you. Sounds terrifying, 
Except that's how we've been living for generations. There isn't a soul that can resist the temptations of the Abyss. Even a stone can be turned. I'm not joking. Your precious ward stone, weakened from the injury inflicted by Discari, has almost succumbed to my charms. Soon the whole barrier around the world wound, the gift of your useless goddess, will be a weapon of the Abyss. Just a little more, and boom! <laughs> Every city with one of these eyesores stuck in the middle of it, from Canabras to Nemerosian, will turn into smoking craters, and all the mortals into red sludge beneath our hooves. So you have a choice. Especially you, my pet. Kiss me on my dainty hoof, pledge your loyalty to Baphomet, and when the world falls, its ruin shall be yours. You've already forgotten me. You mortals have awfully short memories, even shorter than your little lives. Staunton, sweetums, don't you want to introduce me to your friends properly? No? Well, I'd better do it myself. I am Minago, Lily Tu and faithful servant of Baphomet, and leader of his armies. The city is mine now. I'm just starting to settle in, get things just how I like them. But once I'm finished, I promise you, the results will be simply to die for. And it was such a charming little place until you sullied it with your presence. It had such lovely boulevards, quiet and shaded. You took those away from me, and I shan't forgive you for that. They've done much worse things than spoil the promenades. All the people they've killed. Yes, yes, of course, you're right. I grieve for the common folk as well. Well, quite what am I doing to it? Probably the same thing I did to many of your comrades. Sweetly and tenderly persuading it to abandon the mortals and join our side. Prepare to fight to the death, demon! We won't let that happen. you tell us that heaven had turned its back on us and no one would come to our aid? I'm done with this shit! I only followed this hoofed menace because I thought the Crusaders had had it, and there was no other way to protect my family. But now I see that there is hope. I won't bow before these heinous idols ever again. If they kill me, at least I'll die a decent death. Yes! Return to our side, friends! Have courage! We will welcome you back! And heaven never abandoned you, no matter what this deceiver told you. Turncoat, I'll cut out your heart. We'll see how tough you really are. We let you frighten us once, but it won't happen again. Ah, uh, test of my abilities. Ugh, did I mess up again? Ugh, did I mess up again? You are today's sacrifice! Make every strike count. That's it. I'm tired of playing around now. You want to know what will happen when I'm done with the Wardstone? Here's a little demonstration. Yes, yes. 
keep telling yourself that. <laughs> Praise Iomade, you woke up. Healing your wounds was easy, but you were unconscious for so long I was starting to worry we'd lost you. We couldn't stand up to the demoness. Her spells were too strong. <sighs> it's all right. We'll handle it somehow. You blacked out, but Staunton and I managed to get you here to the Defender's Heart. It used to be a tavern, but now it's our headquarters. We're gathering our forces here, and we're preparing to strike back. Demons have been filling Canabras with their spies and infiltrators for a long time. Unfortunately, I don't have enough people to attack the place right now, at least not blindly. I'd be grateful if you snuck in there and scouted out the situation. But just scouting. Don't be a hero. Bad, but not hopeless. We're constantly getting news, and new sources of resistance keep springing up in the districts where everyone seemed to be dead. The survivors are gathering here. You should see them. Their faces, their eyes burning with determination. The city is destroyed, but our resistance is not broken. We will keep fighting. You heard what the demon said. They're going to desecrate the Wardstone and blow up the whole barrier around the World Wound. That would be an even worse disaster than the World Wound's expansion before the Second Crusade. Not only Canabras, but every city with a Wardstone will be destroyed, including the capital. We can't allow that no matter what. We will retake it, even destroy it if we must. Iomade's gift must not become a weapon of the Abyss. First of all, we need to decide what to do with the stone once we get it. What I'm about to say is classified. A traveler came to the city recently. A blind elf calling himself the Storyteller. He insisted he be allowed to examine the Ward Stone, and he raised the alarm when his study was finished. Even before the demon attack, he had found some damage or flaw in the stone. Prelate Hulrun dismissed his words as nonsense, borderline blasphemy. But between you and me, the Prelate's opinion isn't worth much. I think the Storyteller knew what he was talking about. We could use his advice right now. If only we knew where he was. <laughs> I remember the Storyteller spent a lot of time talking to Staunton, a dwarf from my unit. You saw him during the demon attack. The elf asked him about the history of the Crusades. Maybe the Storyteller told Staunton something about where we could find him if anything happened. There's another problem. After the attack, the demons began to gather their forces at the Grey Garrison. It'll be even harder to take them with a head on assault. But I once heard soldiers talking about a secret entrance to the garrison. Trouble is, I have no idea where to look for it. While you explore the city, please keep your eyes open. In case you find something we can use. And one last thing. The Eagle Watch has lost a lot of soldiers recently. Some were killed, but others simply haven't been seen since the attack. In the chaos that is now Canabras, it's next to impossible to confirm anything for sure. <clears throat> One of the missing fighters is Janna Aldori. A new recruit in the Watch. She got along well with Sila, and she often went drinking with her. I honestly thought Sila and Janna had died together. But now Sila's returned with you and there's no sign of Janna. If you learn anything of her whereabouts when you're out in the city, please report back. May the Goddess help you. We're still fighting, which means that Canabra still hasn't fallen. If you come across any groups in the city that can fight, send them here to the Defender's Heart. We'll need every fighter we can muster for the final assault. Yes, one more thing. If you're in the area, check out this address. It's our house. Mine and Anevia's. Well, it was our house. If the building is still standing, open the hidden compartment in the kitchen. It's filled with supplies for a rainy day. You can take whatever you find. You have more need of it.
I'm off.
I do what I must. My skills are absolute. Here. I want to talk to you about something. Something really important. Quit bothering the decent people in here, Wolgif, or I'll knock your teeth out! What's it to you, Delvin Dum Dum? You were told to guard me, and I'm not stopping you. But no one told me I had to shut my trap. Wolgif. Wolgif Jefto. I deal in useful things. I can get you whatever you want. Anything. But there's just one problem. <laughs> I'll lay it out for you. Simple job, 30 minutes tops. We go someplace, talk to someone, and in return, whatever you want, I'll get it for you. Some extra rations, no problem. Armor, weapons, scrolls, you name it. It's as good as yours. If you need my help with something, whistle and I'll be there. I'm handy enough with knives too, and even my magic know-how isn't too shabby. <laughs> what a load of guff! If you were good at magic, you wouldn't be stuck in here now, would you? Don't you listen to him, Chief. He'd find fault with the Queen herself. I'll be useful to have in battle, and I'll sell whatever you want at a reasonable price. It's your lucky day. You won't meet another gem like me in Canabras. Does it really matter? Don't get hung up on the past, Chief. Don't look to the future. Live in the here and now. He was caught thieving. <laughs> Get me out of here and I'll tell you. And don't worry, it's not contagious. That's easy. You know Irabeth? Feisty looking gal, always wears armor. You can't miss her, she's the meanest fighter in the whole city. When you see her, put in a good word for me, will ya? Tell her there's this guy, Wolgif, locked up for no good reason in the Defender's heart. Well, for the follies of his youth. And he really wants to get out on bail so he can keep up his good behavior and make a contribution to society. You got that? Will you do it? Well, think fast. I'm already losing feeling in my legs sitting here. What do you got for me? <laughs> I knew I could count on you. Knew it the moment I laid eyes on you. Follow if you dare.
Well, Chief, what do you got for me? Ha <laughs> you must be a smooth talker. Come on, Delvin, get these bracelets of yours off me. I'm going free. You're sure to regret this. This tiefling will fleece you for everything you've got. Mark my words. You're a bitter little man, Delvin. Petty and mean. You can't even be happy for me, can you? I pity you. I'll leave you alone with your sad little soul. So long. And now, Chief, straight down to business. <clears throat> you see, I'm one of those guys that people around here call thieflings. We just call ourselves the family. After we knocked over that shop and I got stuck here in the Defender's Heart, a little bird told me that Big Sister Charisme wanted to see me. That she had some questions to ask me. You following? Now, she won't be asking me questions like, well, Jif, how'd you manage to get out of this one? Or, well, Jif, you're so thin, didn't they feed you? No, something serious has gone down, and I just know they want to try to pin something on me. I can feel it in my tail. So, I knew right away that I couldn't go alone. You turned up just in time, Chief. You don't need to do anything when we get there. Just stand behind me and look mean, and I'll handle the rest. Somehow. Let's go, I I'll show you the way. trouble? No, they did. Don't hold back! No glory without Go for their heart!
I'm gone. Retreat already? Strike! Into the fray! The light! Take you! I'll cut you wide open! You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Cover me, all right? At last, I thought I'd be flattened like a pancake under that rubble. Much obliged. Damn, I'm not in any pain, but my head is still foggy for some reason. What's with all the hubbub in the city? The name's Finian. I'm a Pathfinder. If there's anything I can do to help, I will. That's right, Finian Dismar, Pathfinder and Crusader. I roam around the world wound wherever my tasks lead me. Scouting, mostly. But this last while, I've just been hanging around in Canabras, waiting until I'm needed again. I'm bored out of my mind, but at least this shop makes for better lodging than some inn. What's that supposed to mean? I just told you. You want to know where I hail from, is that it? Well, I'm from around here, actually. We Kellets of the Star Eye Clan fled when the world wound troubles began. But I couldn't stand by while the demons wreaked havoc, so I came back. Or did you mean to ask about my weapon of choice? My best weapon is every weapon. I'm a skilled and capable fellow, if I do say so myself. I can swing a sword and poke with a spear, but what I am best at is communing with the spirits. They call folks like me Phantom Blades. It's like a spiritualist, but with a twist. It means that some spirit took a liking to me at some point, and it can turn into whatever weapon I need. Handy, eh? I don't need any whetstones or enchantments. Doesn't take up space, either. Although, to be fair, it's not a barrel of laughs. The spirits that bestow this kind of power don't come from happy places, and they're not exactly bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. They usually appear after great battles that leave few survivors. Wait, what? The last thing I saw was some thieves breaking in here. And then the guards came, everyone was running around. After that, it's a bit of a blur. Right when things got intense, they dropped the cabinet on me. I couldn't even help the owner. I was just lying under the shelves like a dimwit until you came along. If there are demons in Canabras, we must do something about it. The city needs every blade it can get. Hey, do you mind taking me with you? I don't think I can handle this alone. And besides, the more the merrier. I've been waiting here so long, I don't even remember anymore. Just sitting and waiting for any word from the Pathfinders, but it looks like everyone has forgotten about me. The shop owner is an old friend of the Pathfinders, so I've taken up residence here. I swear you won't regret it. I can do all sorts of things. Is there anything your party is missing? A sword, a spear, a bow? Just say the word. Might be trap, might be treasure.
Can't hide from me. I do what I must! I'm gone! Thanks, Lan! You're so awesome, Lan! Helpful, am I not?
We do it my way. What is that? Follow? Something to show you. Ta da! <laughs> A real beaut, isn't it? Sit. 
that night, Chief. Melround didn't even set eyes on it. While he was dealing with the golem, I sneaked past them, and that was that. Do you really not remember it? Aw, oh, I thought you would appreciate it. It's from the old man Fileman, the owner of the Ancient Trees and Wonders shop. It's the pride of his collection. The Moon of the Abyss, an amulet with a rare crystal crafted by an unknown maker. When I think of how much this thing is worth, it makes my head spin. <laughs> Thieves have their ways. Psst, what? So she would slay me right away, you mean? You saw how antsy she was over Canabras and all this. So I did it. I took the Moon of the Abyss. But I didn't go to Erebeth, and Big Sister wouldn't hear my explanations. She doesn't have the time. I even thought I'd hide the moon somewhere, and then when all the noise had died down, I'd go get it and make a run for it. I'm sick of the thieflings. And they never appreciated me anyway. <laughs> Why, he asks. It's expensive, pretty. And you know, it's my amulet, actually. Not meaning I stole it, but I, I mean, this is my inheritance. My grandma and I were poor. All we had was a jewelry box with the moon in it. She used to store it under the floor in the basement, and she'd take it out sometimes just to look at it. <laughs> she was always nicer when she had a few drinks in her, so I could ask her things then. One time I asked where she got it from, and she said it was from a demon. You know, the demon who was my grandfather. He said the moon was to be passed down. My mom was good for nothing and nobody, so that's why grandma decided to keep the amulet for me. She used to say it would be mine when I grew up. But she couldn't wait until I grew up. She squandered my inheritance when she became a drunk. Took it to Fileman's shop and pawned it. He gave her some coppers for it and she didn't even haggle. Just grabbed them and ran back to the tavern before last orders. I've been going to Fileman's to look at the moon ever since I was a kid. He chased me away, but I just kept going back. So eventually he gave up. He didn't skimp on security. The place was like a fortress, so he wasn't worried about a street rat like me pinching anything. Even when I got more skilled, I couldn't get any closer to it. One day, I had no one to go with. Another day, there were only oafs who'd never stolen anything more than a church donation box. But when Charisme had planned everything out, I, I realized I had a chance to get the moon and move away from here. Maybe to Garen, I, I hear it's warmer there. I've stayed with the family for too long. Friends. You know, some people don't believe in gods, so gods don't exist for them. And I don't believe in family. All that heartwarming talk about sticking together. Ugh. People like to say those things, but when push comes to shove... Sister Charisme used to say that us tieflings were one family, and you see how that turned out. And did you hear that excuse for an apology? I did the right thing. And I was right to want to run when I just planned on stealing the Moon of the Abyss. Everything turned out as it should. Whatever you think, I owe you. I'm not just a thief, I have my own business selling things. Thanks to you, I'm still in the family. And they, well, I, I mean, we have the black market sewn up in this city. It's a good way to sell valuables. So, if you need anything, a scroll or something, just say the word. I have a little portal to our people in Erosian. You put a note there, and you get what you need. I can't get you anything big, but what they do have is all high quality. Nothing's too good for you, Chief. What's mine is yours. For a price, of course. Treat already? Cover me, all right? I'll cut you wide open. The light takes you. Zap you. Why not both? You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Distract them from me.
Don't mind me. I'm gone. This is my kind of work. works differently. Will be quick. Time to strike into the fray. You won't survive me. We'll make this quick. She won't feel a thing. I don't know. Can we really do this? Listen, we don't have a choice. There are demons everywhere. What else would you have us do? In Iomade's name, we're sorry, girl. But it is our duty. We have to do this, not for our own sake, but for the sake of everyone who can still be saved from the demons. If we don't win this battle, you won't have long to live anyway. They're insane! We've got to do something! I understand. You're scared. You feel powerless. You think this will help. You don't have to justify yourselves to me. Just do what you've decided to do. We... we... 
Our weapons barely scratch the demon's hides. We're sacrificing this girl to Iomade so we can consecrate our weapons with her innocent blood and gain the power to destroy the spawn of the Abyss. It's extreme, but we have no other choice. We have to defend this city somehow or else we'll all perish, including her. Whoa, whoa, no need for that. Please, don't fight. All of you are good people, defenders of the city. Please don't hurt them. They just made a mistake. They're gone, and they all lived. I was sure that someone would die today. So many people have died here already. But we are still alive for some reason. Strange, isn't it? But you shouldn't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a silly girl, really. No, don't be silly. I'm very ordinary. Well, I know different types of tricks. But Soot taught me those. Now Soot here? She truly is unusual. She's clever and she can talk, but only to me. She teaches me magic tricks and lots of other stuff. I don't know what I'd do without her. Call me Ember. I live here, on the streets, for many years now. But there's nothing to say about me. I must have misheard. This girl? Join our party? What could we possibly want with this dirty little beggar? Sure. Let's go. Aha! I found! A test of my abilities. No glory without risk. Demand your blood! I'm gone. Can we retreat already? Surrender or else! Don't hold back! The light take you! Cover me, alright? Too late for apologies. Uh -huh. 
can handle them, right? Into the fray! No glory without risk! We do it my way. I won't let you hurt my friends. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm off. This will be quick. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. Strike! The light! Take you! I'll hit you! The Inheritor! Guide you are my today's sacrifice! I'll cheer you on from over there. You won't survive me. Did you see that? You've marched me to the bones today. You're a good person. I like you. I do what I must. of my abilities. You should have run! Into the fray! Go for their hearts! This will hurt! Endure this! Stab you or zap you? Why not both? You won't stop us. Ha! Distract them for me. Don't hold I can't me. die now. I'm not nearly rich enough. This wound. Could this happen? Retreat already?
This will hurt! No glory without okay, wide risk! Open. I hope you appreciate I'm gone. You can handle them, right? Make every strike count. to the bones today. We do it my way. Well, this didn't go... well. I'll hit you! Save the last one for me. The light take you! Time to share your treasures! This spell's fall to the... Cover me, all right? Marched me to the bones today. Wearing a robe? Check. Baphomet symbol around the neck? Check. Crazy eyes? Check. Note to self bring a mirror next time to be able to adjust the optimal level of eye craziness. Everything is ready for the experiment. An audience. 
problematic, but not critical. You there, boy. Stay out of this. It is counterproductive to stand in the way of scientific progress. Who's that? I don't know her. Greetings, boys and girls. I am your sister in sin, a devotee of Lord Baphomet's dark will, and so on and so forth. She looks like one of us, but she talks kind of weird. Who's there with you? Who? Oh, them! Just an audience, they don't matter. Consider them a supplementary component of the coming experiment. In the name of our Lord Baphomet, please be so kind as to undertake a little test of your competency in our wicked cause. Let's start with something simple. So here's my first question. What is Lord Baphomet's favorite weapon? We will not answer to you. Our Lord can wield any kind of weapon. He is all-powerful. Wrong. He wields no weapons at all. He doesn't need any. He just gores his enemies with his horns. That is correct. But still, boy, no prompting, please. This experiment has taken quite a surprising turn. I would never have expected the followers of the great Baphomet to be baffled by such a simple question. Fine. Let's recalibrate the difficulty and proceed with the next question. Please name Lord Baphomet's sacred animal. A bull! Of course everybody knows that. Yep. And a cow. I'd like to ask you to stop prompting them, but it seems they could do with a prompt or two. It appears the experiment has yielded results which are as unexpected as they are incredible. Baphomet's cultists have not the slightest idea about who Baphomet really is, let alone any in-depth knowledge of his ideology or philosophy. I'm positive that this news will cause a sensation in widest scientific circles. Damn it! She's right. I'm a shitty excuse for a cultist. And my mother used to tell me to become a plowman. Hey, take it easy! We've only had two questions. You there, come on, ask another one. We'll get the next one. Is there any sense in continuing? You cannot answer the simplest of questions. I am ashamed of all of you, as cultists and as individuals. Please, ask again. I can answer, I'm sure I can. <sighs> How do you spell Baphomet's name? B A F A. Oh, screw it. To hell with Baphomet. I thought it was gonna be fun, but instead there are all these questions. I'm done here. I'm going back to my home village, back to my mother. Hey, wait! You there! How dare you stir up discord in our ranks! Grab her and tie her up! And her entire entourage, too! The experiment is complete. Unable to deal with the questions, the cultists decide to deal with the examiner instead. A typical reaction for a person who has never been burdened with any intelligence. Now you're gonna start hitting each other, aren't you? Please, proceed. I won't interrupt. I'll cheer you on from... over there. Don't hold back! Into the fray! You won't survive me. Stab you or zap you? Why not both?
The result is statistically predictable, especially considering their intelligence level. What about you, boy? Are you ready to answer some questions for the good of science? Let's proceed with the experiment. My first question is simple. Which colors does the goddess Iomade prefer? This answer is correct. It is comforting to meet at least one educated person in the melting pot of ignorance that is Canabras today. Let's proceed. Did Era didn't take part in any crusade before he died? Your answer is correct. Aridan's death dates to 4606, and that is precisely the year when the World Wound was opened. The First Crusade started back in 4622. Your knowledge would make Mendev's Crusaders proud. My final question is, what is the title that Arilu Vorlesh bears? Is she the architect of the World Wound, the Lord of the Labyrinth, or the Border Inquisitor of the Shapeless Abyss? That's correct! Most excellent! You successfully answered all of my questions! Splendid! Amazing! This is a breakthrough! This... Oh, I thank you for your cooperation. It seems to me that I owe you an explanation. My name is Nenio. I am an explorer, a pilgrim, a yet-to-be-recognized scientific luminary, future author of the great Encyclopedia Galarianica, and rector of all Absalom's universities at once. Future rector, I should say. I also know several spells. It is so heartening to see you strive for knowledge. I have been conducting an experiment comparing the intellectual abilities of the average cultist with those of the average crusader. And I must admit that you passed the test with flying colors. This does offer a glimmer of hope for the future of crusade. I have always claimed that despite the popular beliefs about the limited intellectual abilities of those in the army, at least some of them can be considered educated. It pleases me to see that I was correct. Yes. Do you wish to become my follower? To accompany me on my expeditions to the World Wound? To assist me in my experiments? To run errands for me? Perhaps even to write down my deepest thoughts for the benefit of future generations? Oh, how splendid! Of course, I agree! Truth be told, I have no money to pay you. But you will be aiding the progress of science, and that is its own reward. Huh? What? Oh, yes, the dangers and these battles. Of course, I will follow your orders. I place my life in your capable hands, so I can focus on the things that really matter. Excellent, you're hired. To think that I finally found someone to accompany me. 27 crusaders before you said no. Not one of them saw the undeniable appeal of my offer. Your first assignment is to take me to a safe place. I have to admit that today's experiment has left me quite tired.
We do it my way. <laughs>